Yes guys, welcome back to another Fancy Football Fix YouTube video. My name is FPL Nacho and in this video we are going to be looking at my Game Week 12 team reveal. With two free transfers, I'm hoping for another fantastic game week off the back of a green arrow in Game Week 11. I'm also going to be showing you the best midfielders to buy for this weekend alongside the players that are predicted to score the most points. So as always, if you can, drop a like on this video and of course smash that subscribe button. It would be massively appreciated. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. So first up, as I mentioned, I want to touch on three midfielders that I really think we all need to have on our watch list going into the weekend. I see a few FPL managers out there with maybe Madison and their teams. Of course, we need to get an injury update in the Friday press conference, whether he is going to be available or not for the weekend. But all three of these are fantastic alternatives to Madison if you are looking for a midfielder or in general, if you have maybe an injured midfielder in your team outside of Madison. So the three players we're going to look at right now is going to be Anthony Gordon of Newcastle, Matoma of Brighton and Martinelli at Arsenal. All three at very different price ranges but I think that always helps because not all of us have loads and loads of money in the bank. Sometimes we are a little bit stripped for cash so I want to make sure I bring in an option each different price range. So first up, I want to look at Gordon at Newcastle. So 5.7 million off the back of that goal against Arsenal in the previous game week. An XG per 90 of 0.34 and an expected assist of 0.23. He has fantastic underlying numbers and you can see them being highlighted in green. He is leading the way in that department against Matoma and Martinelli so really solid numbers for Gordon and it's also worth noting that Newcastle as a team are producing fantastic expected goals in each and every game so they're right up there for chances created now the big thing about Anthony Gordon going into the weekend is they have a fantastic fixture away against Bournemouth who are a team who are really struggling to keep clean sheets so far this season and also the injuries that we've seen to the likes of Isak and Callum Wilson means that we might see Anthony Gordon play as a number nine just for game week 12 in isolation. I'm not expecting that going forward, but because of the injuries that Eddie Howe has, I think Gordon does have the possibility of playing as that forward. And that means I think that could increase his chances of actually scoring in the weekend. So a brilliant option for your teams in game week 12. Longer term though, I'm not as bullish. Look at the fixtures, Chelsea, Man United, Everton, Spurs. Yes, they are at home, a few of them, especially the Chelsea and Man United games, but I don't really get the idea that there is going to be Bags full of goals for Gordon to be upon. So a really good budget option at 5.7 million. Great for game week 12, but longer term, I'm not as bullish on him. Now, a player that I think is brilliant for the next four game weeks is going to be Brighton's Matoma. Now, he is the popular pick at 36.7% owned at the time of recording. So he is very much more of a template player, but you can't really ignore him right now in the game with the fixtures and the underlying numbers. 0.29 XG per 90, 0.19. And he also leads the way for big chances compared to the other two assets at 0.77. With the injuries that Brighton have had, it really is a case of Matoma stepping up and being the talisman in this team. And with the fixtures coming up for Brighton, I just want to highlight, they do have Sheffield United at home, which is one of the best fixtures you could have, especially for game week 12. Then they have Nottingham Forest, followed by Chelsea, Brentford and Burnley. So the next five for Brighton, I think, are definitely potential for goals over that period. And Matoma is the only one that I could confidently say that is going to play the majority of minutes over that period for Brighton. We just saw them play last night in the Europa League with a great 2-0 victory against Ajax. Again, could we see rotation from Deserbis Brighton this weekend? Absolutely could happen. But if I had to put my money on one player playing, it would be Matoma. And at 6.5 million, I think he's a brilliant investment for your teams over the next five game weeks if you want a piece of that Brighton attack. Last up is going to be Martinelli, a slightly more expensive price at 7.7 .7 million. Now, there have been a few question marks about Bakayo Saka, but Arteta has kind of said he's going to be okay. Hopefully, we'll get some more information today in the press conferences. But if Saka is ruled out for the weekend, I think we look no further than Martinelli. Now, it's worth noting his underlying numbers are really not good. 0.18 XG per 90, 0.12. These aren't really the numbers that we're used to seeing of Martinelli, especially with zero big chances across the course of the season. And his expected FPL, FPL points are only at 3.99. However, it looks like Eddie Nketiah could be a risk for the weekend, meaning Trossard most likely will play as a number nine. And what I really like about Trossard is he's able to recreate the strengths of Gabriel Jesus dropping in into the lines, linking up the play. 
Meaning Martinelli is the one advancing furthest forward in that front three. And we know with Martinelli, when Gabriel Jesus is in the team, it makes Martinelli a better player. So if they can get a like-for-like -like replacement in Trossard playing as the number nine, I think that only enhances Martinelli as an option. And look at the fixtures at Arsenal coming up. Burnley at home, Brentford away, Wolves and then Luton. I think there is opportunity for some big scores over that period. Not only for clean sheets, but for goals scored. I see a lot of managers going for the double up of Gabriel and Saliba. I like it. But if you want to be a bit more offensive, if you could squeeze Martinelli on your team, I think it could reap big returns over the next five game weeks. So next up, let me show you what my current game week 12 team is looking like going into the weekend. So as I mentioned, I had, a, I had a good game week in game week 11 with a green arrow. And we're going into this week with two free transfers, 0.2 million in the bank and ranked around 650,000 in the world. And as you can see here, spoiler alert, this is going to be the first time I'm planning on using a 4-4-2 formation. So quite excited by this, actually. So first, up, let me cover off who I have in goal, because when I wildcarded in game week 10, I brought in Areola with the expectation of playing him week in, week out, and that hasn't changed. Yes, West Ham are looking a little bit ropey defensively, haven't really kept any clean sheets this season, but at home against Forest, this could be the first time he does keep a clean sheet. I'm not really too worried about the goalkeeper department right now, but if you are a manager that's maybe sat there with a Sam Johnston, you are licking your lips with the returns that he's had recently and the fixture that he has this weekend but look I'm not going to be spending a transfer on a goalkeeper especially when we only have 0.2 million in the bank now moving into the defenders this is of course is how my team is currently looking without any transfers Gabriel at home against Burnley he played midweek in the Champions League I think that's a good thing means he's probably part of Arteta's best 11 but we did see against Sheffield United an easier fixture at home Gabriel come out of the team could we see that again against Burnley? Potentially. Is it enough of a reason to sell Gabriel? No, I think we just jump on the Arteta rotation train once again and hope that Gabriel starts this weekend. That would be my advice. Matty Cash is a bit more of a complex one. Played in the Europa League, but only came on for the last 15 minutes as a substitute. Now, we don't know whether Ezri Concer is going to remain at right back in the weekend or maybe Cash was getting a few minutes in preparation to start on the weekend. I don't really know the answer to that one, unfortunately. Hopefully we get a little bit of an idea from Unai Emery in this press conference. But my advice right now would probably be just to play Matty Cash this weekend, have a good first sub and just expect him to start. But if he doesn't, he might come on for the last 20. Is it enough to sell him though? Probably not. If you were going to sell him, I probably would maybe go for the double up in Arsenal defence if you're not planning on a midfielder like a Saliba. The last two, Guy he I brought him in for this fixture in particular, so I'm really happy to start him. But Shimikas is the big question mark right now. So a bit of a spoiler alert once again. I don't really know where, what direction I want to take my team. But Shimikas started midweek for Liverpool in that 3-2 loss against Toulouse. And coming off at halftime gives me mixed signals. I don't know whether he has actually been a problem for Klopp or whether he's resting him for the weekend. So that is going to be a big question mark right now. Now, at home against Brentford, I don't even think that's an easy game for Liverpool. I don't think that's a guaranteed clean sheet. And look at the fixtures coming up for Liverpool over the next few weeks. Man City away in game week 13, so I wouldn't be playing Shimikas in that game. Then they got Fulham at home and then Sheffield United. So two really good fixtures then. But what's to say we don't get an injury update regarding Robertson around that period that he is returning? So I need to have a little bit of think about Shimikas because I brought him in as part of the wild card. If he doesn't start against Brentford, then I am looking at my first bench to come and help me out. Although I would be worried Shimikas might come in later on in the game. So Shimikas could be a potential transfer out. If I do sell him, I might go to Mitchell at a similar price and just double up on the Crystal Palace defence for a little bit longer. Unfortunately, I can't afford an Arsenal defender outside of Gabriel. So that is a little bit of a worry. So moving into the midfield right now, we got Saka. Yes, he is yellow flagged. I'm hoping Arteta will come out today and say that he's absolutely fine. But because of the injury worries, I am taking the captaincy off him and put it on Mo Salah. I am a little bit worried about Mo Salah over the last few weeks, but at home against Brentford on penalties, I can't really look past it right now going into this weekend. Son away against Wolves, of course the early kickoff, so make sure you do keep an eye on any early team reveals. But not the best situation with the injuries that they do have, but I'm absolutely fine holding on to Son and Bowen at home against Nottingham Forest. No issues there whatsoever. So forwards, Watkins and Haaland, no complaints. Yes, I might be looking at selling Watkins in a few game weeks, especially with the return of Nkunku into that Chelsea team. But for game week 12 at home, nobody sells Watkins in any home fixture. And that is going to be the case in this situation. 
And looking at the bench, as I mentioned, I have a very good first sub in Cole Palmer. So if anybody in this team doesn't play, I'm more than happy for him to step in. So as you can tell with the way that I've kind of spoke about my team, I have no real idea what I want to do. I was hoping Matty Cash would have been ruled out, so I could have done cash to Saliba as part of a one free transfer. But right now at the time of recording, if we don't get any news whatsoever, burning a transfer could be a consideration. Otherwise, maybe I downgrade Taylor to someone like a Bulldog at Sheffield United who has slightly favourable fixtures in the weeks that I may require him to play him. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd be really interested to know what you would do with this team. Uh, I'm a little bit stuck. So last up, let's move on to the game week 12 predicted points. So as always, in this slide, it tells you the players that are predicted to score the most points in game week 12 in isolation. This is a really good opportunity for you to identify those players as either one week punts or simply just the players to target going forward. So in the goalkeeper department, well done once again for those that brought in Johnson early doors. He is top four predicted points for the goalkeepers, followed by Anana, Rea, Martinez and Allison. So Johnson looking like an amazing value option this season. Moving into defenders, no surprises that the Arsenal boys lead the way with that brilliant home game against Burnley. Ben White, very expensive at 5.7 million, but looks good on paper, followed by Saliba and Gabriel. Dunk at 4.8 predicted points and Trippier at 4.7. Moving into the midfielders, if Saka is going to be available, he looks like the best option at 7.5 predicted points, which is a lot more than that of Mo Salah at 6. So, if Saka is definitely confirmed for the weekend from Arteta, maybe a captaincy on Saka is actually the route to go for. And you can also see Martinelli at 6.2 predicted points, a player I've mentioned I would love to bring in this week if I had the route to do so. Last up, looking at the forwards, Haaland, no surprises, leading the way at 5.4. Maybe a differential for some who are selling in Nketiah to bring in Ferguson for this week at home against Sheffield United. And then, of course, Watkins, Hoyland and Awoni make up the top five forwards. So, guys, that is going to wrap up today's Game Week 12 video. I really hope it's provided some value. As always, if you can drop a like and smash that subscribe button, it's always massively appreciated. And if you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments and we'll see you in the next one. Have a brilliant game week. Take care. Cheers.